there are not many things believers are looking for listen it looks like we're busy looking for many things but when you reduce the desire and the hunger of believers they are seeking for an encounter that will produce tangible results that's all people are looking for that's all people fast for that's all people listen to messages for that's all people follow and pursue grace for and tonight i pray that you will have the sensitivity to discern something that will change your life let's just look at one scripture please keep standing if you don't mind we'll sit down but let's just stand jeremiah 17 mighty god we thank you for your presence you can change people jeremiah 17 verse 8 for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out its root by the river and shall not see when heat cometh but her leaf shall be green and shall not be anxious in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruits please look up there is a mystery of dramatic consistent ever increasing grace and anointing one of the frustrations in the body of Christ is that we know so much yet our experience shows that we can only deliver so little are we together I am convinced that what the body of Christ is lacking is not revelation by the grace of God I believe we have gone past that dimension of ignorance there is so much light in the body preachers have come right from the seven days and they have brought different dimensions of kingdom realities praying and since God has given us the privilege to tie this up I just wanted to point out certain things that will make this sacrifice fruitful there's so much revelation going on in the body of Christ Rema after Rema men who have stretched the dimensions of the knowledge of scripture people have taken this scripture and turned it upside down I mean people have explored the mysteries of the kingdom but our lives do not validate that these experiences have become true in our lives this is the missing link please pay attention there is nothing more frustrating to a believer than exploring the realities of the kingdom and not having capacity in the spirit to validate your claims. It's one thing to speak, it's one thing to preach, it's one thing to teach, it's one thing to share a lot of rema, it's one thing to say God will do this, it's one thing to prophesy and say I change your story, but it's another thing for it to happen. I trust that something will come upon us tonight that will produce performance performance not explanation performance 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 in the name of Jesus Christ every time they saw Jesus they desired him because their sight of him meant the end of certain calamities forever it was not an issue of trying you see we preachers have a lot of repentance to do before God. We make bold claims about dimensions we have not contended experientially to demonstrate. I am very afraid of making claims that have not contended for the grace dimension to validate. The reason is because you whet the appetite of people. You make them desirous, but they never see the result. And the Bible says, hope deferred can make the heart of a man weary. If I prophesy to you and I say God is going to change your life 
and because you honor me you believe it brothers and sisters there should be a performance faith is not foolishness we have created all kinds of theological dissertations to explain our inability to translate spiritual realities to their material equivalent the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among the people and we beheld we beheld we saw it the apostle peter said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled please pray in one minute and say lord let me handle something people tonight please Let me turn. That's the only way you can be a man of impact. The world is no longer waiting for storytellers. You reign, you ancients are your king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion scheme. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, thou spirit of the tree, and keep God on. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty in this place, mighty in this place, mighty in this place, mighty in this place. You are mighty in my life, mighty in my life, mighty in my life. John sent his disciples and said, Go and ask him, Are you the Messiah? Or should we expect another? They came to Jesus and said, John sent us. It was a call for validation of ministry. Are you the Messiah? And Jesus never responded. The Bible says, All of a sudden he turned and the blind saw and the deaf here heard and he said, Go and tell John. When in the wilderness, what sign was given to him? Go and tell John what you have seen. Go and tell John. The man who can open the eyes of the blind. The man who can raise the dead. Go and tell him who else is the Messiah. Brothers and sisters, listen. Do you know the reason why the church... It's not making the kind of impact we should make there is so much noise but very little performance i'm here to challenge us tonight believe me pastor you will bear me witness the church is not lacking revelation with the internet age and advancement in technology you can access any man of god's message but I want to teach you something you cannot access on tape. Pay attention. I show you a mystery. Hmm. There is more to the sound that you hear on tape. There is a dimension of reality in the spirit you cannot get from a message. Please pay attention. This is what I've come to release. This is my assignment. You can listen to a man's message. You can understand his perspectives about the reality of the kingdom. 
he can begin to communicate different dimensions of truth from spiritual growth to capacity in the spirit to the ministry of prayer the ministry of angels the performance of the word and, and so on the, the prophetic dimension and all facets of kingdom realities men can dispense it and you receive it at first you will be excited because it is new but you will later be frustrated because it is barren so you catch that truth my goodness i didn't know this and that and you jump at it but then when you put it side by side with realities of life it does not have the potency to deliver the result that will keep you sustained in that value that's the reason why we hold on to revelations we like a man of god for three weeks we are excited and we exhaust all he knows after three weeks we dump him because our hearts seem to be looking for something only god can give you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne Great for thou spirit of the deep and weep kadosh you are mighty on your throne The Lord told me this. Please pay attention. Higher than your prayer life. <laughs> more than fasting. More than Bible study and opening the word of God. Thank you sound. That's, that's wonderful. Much more than this activity. There is a degree of alignment and there is a protocol. That you must assume there is a posture you must take in the spirit. To ever do business with God I know we talk a lot about prayer I believe it but it's more than prayer believe me when I tell you this I know we study the word but it's more than studying the word this is the secret I want to show you Paul said I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live. He said, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And he says, the life that I live in the body, that is the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'll tell you the reason why we do not see the power of God. Because we are not interested in becoming reflectors of his glory. We are interested in using him to become men of God. We are interested in using him to become apostles and prophets. We are interested in using him to prove a point to our enemies that we are not failures. And God says that is inconsistent with the character of a man who will be a true reflection. More than your prayer life, I have seen believers stretch their cap from border to border in search for power. 40 days dry seven days dry but fundamentally the motivation behind their pursuit has corrupted the entire process i have been crucified with christ i have seen people cry around for power and anointing but fundamentally listen our desire is not such is not so much about loving God and seeing his kingdom come as much as using ministry as a vocation to come out of complex and inferiority it's a terrible motivation that if we do not address we will never never see the glory of God when most an encounter with God the first instruction was take off your shoes take off every experience and ideology and wrong paradigm he said for where thou standest is holy ground we have taught all kinds of strategies of bringing the presence of God to a meeting singing, worshipping, shouting jumping none of these things will remedy for the absence of intimacy that can produce death in a man listen, the apostle said so then death works in us he said that life will work in you there is a dimension in the spirit hear me everybody there is a part in the spirit where you do not go in group 
it's a realm where everybody must go as an individual no matter how you start that journey you get to that pathway in the spirit you don't go as a man of god you go as an addicted seeker of god because the end of that journey is to kill you you must die carry the glory it's not a gift it's a reward not everything in the kingdom is a gift we are so gift conscious we think everything is a gift what then is the reward of obedience give me you everything else can wait give me you volume mic i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you please give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you listen we pray and we want power but the goal is not to see his kingdom come you know why the bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked so when you begin to sing god doesn't just anoint you because you have a good voice god doesn't just anoint you because you want to be a preacher there is a scanning of the spirit he scans your motif until he finds himself reflected in you our motives and our motivations are corrupt mundane carnal and that's the reason why we cannot carry the power of god in a few minutes i already see the angels of the lord in this place i already see the angels of the lord when i begin to see the angels of the lord i know that he wants to bless i told you that i came to release something from the throne there is a difference between preaching and carrying the presence of God you can fake power you cannot fake the secret place you can fake anointing but you cannot fake his presence there are many people who have not mastered the art of hosting his presence everything you deliver on stage is the overflow of your secret place you cannot fake it not by English not by Rema there is a limitation to which revelation alone can enter people it takes the presence to to hit the epicenter of a man's life and rightly divide that man to a point where even if it's just a song he can go back and for one week he does not know what happened to him brothers and sisters is more than english it's more than anointing it's an atmosphere that you come with it's an atmosphere that is the reward for death. John said this, that I may decrease so that he may increase. Let me tell you something. The biggest secret of my life is that I repented from ministry many years ago. I repented from being a man of God many years ago and I became a follower of his presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. When I started with God, Pastor, I never had a desire for ministry. I didn't even know that ministers collected honorarium after meetings. It was never my intention to be a pastor, to be a preacher. 
I had one desire not to look for fame. There are many ways to look for fame. You can write books. You can make noise. You can create trouble. You can kill somebody. There are many easy ways of becoming famous. But I had a passion. I never prayed for anointing. Never. I prayed for his presence. I wanted it more than my necessary food. Please, I want you to pay attention. Because God is about to change your life. We miss it. Because we organize conferences and we think the key is just more revelation and rema. No, it's more alignment. There is a posture a man can take in the spirit that compels him to be host of God's presence. It's more than English. Believe me when I tell you this. This is the hidden mystery behind messages. Mm, it's more than revelation. The church is not barren of revelation. But we have lost the art of aligning ourselves like the moon does not have any light of itself it is its degree of alignment is a reflection of the sun you must get to a point in your life where your ultimate motive revolves around his kingdom not your agenda not your desire not using god to make money or using god to get fame Anna wanted a child so desperately because she was tired of the mockery of Penina and that desperation took her to Shiloh and although she prayed God said your motivation is corrupt you want a child to end mockery is too much and too small a reason and a time came she was tired and fed up and she said Lord I changed my motive I'm no longer interested in proving any point I realize that you need a prophet to be a judge over your people can my womb deliver that prophet and she prayed once and a child came listen there are men who speak and heaven responds it's not because of accuracy of rules in prayer they have become so dead that every communication from them is a reflection of the desire of the father and so through their songs and through their words they become communicators of a realm that is invisible they become envoys of a reality and a dimension that is more than the scope of human understanding this is the mystery the mystery to true relevance is death there is a relationship between death and glory jesus said the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified and he said except a corn of wheat falls listen the primary agenda of the spirit is that you lose relevance in yourself your life becomes barren only to be given relevance by the presence and the agenda of the kingdom that was the original design that you remain inadequate until his presence gives you relevance so you don't create your agenda and ask God like an icing on a cake and say Lord can you bless what I'm doing when he comes he kills it and rebuilds it according to pattern listen when God comes to your life he doesn't continue from where you started by yourself no matter how far you have gone you will go back and build he said ensure that the house is built according to pattern and until the last peg was put according to pattern then his Shekinah came. The glory of God is costly. You don't get it by confession. It's the reward of death. These are the men who the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake. Not just believers. He suffered no man to do them wrong. They are the men that God can kill a nation to keep them alive. Because their posture in the spirit is territorial. Their alignment, their degree of death and selflessness they are the kinds that come with the atmosphere of heaven they are men who carry prophetic implication when you see them your life cannot be the same it's not it's not as a result of prophecy you enter their atmosphere and you are implicated by their grace it's more than words it's more than good preaching please hear me those who are pastors here i show you a secret 
you will preach and be frustrated you will borrow the message of every man of God and exhaust the curriculum stretch your intellect from border to border and be in shame because a time will come you will have too much revelation to defend and it will be a mockery and an indictment upon your person we know the God who can heal but can he heal now we know the God who can save. Less than 5% of the prophecies we give people come to pass. Members are angry because we are doing a lot of religion and garbage is on stage. We do it with so much confidence, pride in our ignorance. It takes the secret place to change a man. Are we together? Your pastor put this meeting because he wants to stretch you. It's a meeting for the mature. They that are ready to follow that path of death it was in the cave of Adullam when David was left alone. That was where his destiny began to be molded. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The secret to ministry is to forget about it. You don't become a pastor by looking for ministry and platforms. Your voice is loudest when you are silent in the secret place. That's how men hear you. That's how men hear you. so we search ha. Job said there is a part which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there there are virgin dimensions in the spirit that only accept by sacrifice can take a man there sacrifice and the sacrifice is not money the sacrifice is not prayer the sacrifice is not worship the sacrifice is your heart because your heart represents your entire scope of relevance and so he says my son give me your heart not your ministry many people have not given God their heart we think we have the fact that you think you have is a sign that you have not because no man has the power in himself to give God your heart you only have power to allow him take it it was easy for Abraham to give Ishmael because there was an alternative but for Isaac is a demand he said take down thy only son until you crucify the object that represents the pivot of your relevance forget about power you will never do business with God in this realm God will take the object that represents the epicenter of your relevance if it is business he will come for it if it is relationship, he will come for it. I tell you, until he sees his karagma upon your line, you come to a point where whether people say bishop or pastor or papa or mama, it has lost the ability to touch you because the, the for God has become a shield in your heart and no encumbrance outside of him can penetrate. That's the place of power. That is where men of grace have accessed. That's where few people do not want to. We try to follow every other route. But I bring you a message. I may not boast of knowing all the revelations. I may not boast of many things in the body of Christ. But one thing I can tell you is I understand the protocol of his presence. I know it is an office. I know how a man can find God. I know how a man can invoke the presence of God. I hail you most high I truly hail you most high I hail you most high Listen Tonight I want us to come to a point where you tell the Lord I'm not looking for ministry not for power not your hand not your wisdom I want you it says oh Lord thou art my God early will I seek you my soul thirsts for you in a dry and weary land wherein there is no water. It says to see your power and your glory. Listen. I seek his presence for a living. 
I love him more than ministry. You've heard me say it. It's not a lie. Ask him. I love him more than titles. I have no business building any empire for myself. His vanity is mundane and carnal. My desire is to see his kingdom come. My desire is to see Christ lifted. Not my ministry. Not man of God. I will tell you, I know why you may not see his presence. Because beyond our prayer is that desire to find something to demonstrate to people we are not failures. As sincere as it is, it will disqualify you from accessing true grace. The Bible says, let her walk speak for her at the gates. She doesn't speak for her walks. No. So tonight I came to challenge you. You will lay down your heart and tell him, Lord, it's yours. Until you do that, brothers and sisters, every other thing you are doing is a waste. The songs that we sing, they all belong to you. Even the air I breathe, they all belong to you, belong to you. Listen, I told God something. I said, Lord, if there is anything in my life that cannot give you glory directly, don't ask me, take it away. God doesn't need to ask me for permission. My answer is yes. I've lost the ability to say no. Are we together now? I know this is simple. I've seen people pray and fast for 40 days and return back with frustration. Because they told a friend, let's bet I'm coming back with power. And they went back and God said no. Not playing games with you. They come for meetings and see a man of God that intimidates them and say, by next week, my level would have changed. That's not how you get it. You die and his life brings you back. That's the key to sustaining the power of God. I am crucified with Christ. Crucified. You have no agenda. A dead man can no longer feel the impulses in his environment. You can pinch him. He doesn't know whether you called him pastor or brother. His passion for God has so distracted him. He does not have the ability to consider these things. He has been so distracted by his allegiance and his passion to see the kingdom come. While we are on our way coming, I was thinking, said, Lord, all this that we are doing is for your glory. And I was happy because he would bless his people. Can you get to that point where you rejoice coming into the midst of God's people because you know that when you come, you bring heaven. It's not the issue of saying, I'm a man of God, I'm anointed, I have anointing. No, 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 it has nothing to do with anointing. You are bringing an atmosphere that is capable of influencing the spirit nature of men. Listen, a man can come under an atmosphere and be altered by that atmosphere. Whether you have faith or not, it will influence you. It was Saul that came where Samuel was and he stepped into that atmosphere and something hit him. He prophesied naked from morning till night. Human beings carry atmospheres. Every man transports with him the realities in his secret place. You carry your possibilities along. So that when you are in a place, you can activate possibilities in men that would not have happened. It is the power of creation. It is the reward for intimacy. Tonight, please listen to me. If there is one thing I want you to get, we'll still teach tomorrow. Through the worship, the singing, is one of the things I was blessed with. The life of this gentleman. And, and besides, I'm going to speak upon your life. You were dancing because a realm is about to open for you. Believe me, my brother, I'm not part of the men of God who just talk to people. I have stayed with God and I have made a vow that oh lord if my mouth will utter a thing that will not come to pass let my tongue
cliff to the roof of my mouth i have no business trying to tell people things that's how you make your words weighty don't have a track record of vain professions that when you speak people say amen they don't expect it to happen they will tell you if it does happen they'll say man of god let me confess i never believed it can you come to a point where you become believable by a track record of results such that when you speak ha, for i am a man under authority he said i say to one go and he will go i say to one come and he will come and jesus said i've not found such faith but the key tonight you have prayed great servants of god have come here and dispense certain truths to add to this you must cry for alignment tonight and say lord i lose relevance in myself outside of you i'm i'm not embarrassed to declare how useless my life is become the epicenter of my relevance my relevance that's what i told him all kinds of introduction oh great man of god apostle joshua selman those things mean nothing to me because i live only to see his kingdom come and anything that cannot promote his kingdom directly i have no business in it believe me brothers and sisters many people love ministry more than god and we are sincere because we are human beings you know we come from backgrounds where people have refused to believe in us so we are under pressure to do things that demonstrate that the hand of god is upon our lives except for the fact that it is too small a reason to host God's presence mm. you will work miracles unconsciously than you will do consciously because you have lost touch these things have lost the ability to capture your heart this has been my message drawing men to a point where the true secret of power is not cramming how to pray well because the bible even tells us it takes the holy ghost to even help you pray compared to god's standard what we are doing is nonsense there is a dimension of god's power that is beyond principles it's a reward for intimacy he said i call you friends for a servant knoweth not what the master is doing the secrets of the lord the bible says are with them that fear him and he will reveal to them his covenants we are going to pray and i'll minister to you i like your heart to be so desperate that you say oh god let it please you to do business with me i'm tired of acting like it is working when it is not there's gotta be more gotta be there's gotta be more than this for desperate people do desperate things and we pressing in there's gotta be more help me say i see a lot of young ministers running around we're looking for every man of god we can find because we want to tap <laughs> No, there are virgin dimensions in the spirit it's a track record you are certified he said let no man trouble me there is a scar upon me a testament of endurance i have stayed in the secret there is a scar upon me my has been altered as a demonstration of the excellency of my pursuit let no man trouble me and demon said jesus i know we see the scar upon his hands Paul, I know we see the scars upon him. But where are your scars? Where are your symbols of endurance in the spirit? Show me the testament of your cry and your tears. Show me what you have laid down. Communication of your passion for spiritual things. Show me how much you have capacity to give up ministry, give up business, give up everything for his presence. It's a secret to get everything. His presence. Moses said, let your presence go with us. He knew. He didn't say, let your power. Let your presence. 
let your presence he said for how shall they know when God was about to use me I said Lord I'm not ready to fight any man of God because of jealousy and pain I'm not ready to join the bandwagon of frustrated preachers hoping and praying that men of God fall to validate their mediocrity Lord I contend to stand in a dimension in the spirit where I can true blessing to the body I don't want to be a noisemaker that when they say man of God is here their hearts are open again expecting to be and we share the grace talk about what God can do he will change your life and the sick are getting happy that my life will change and we share the grace and they walk back and we shamefully move as men of God protocol leading us all around The Bible says, let them that rule well, they are the ones who should receive double honor. Men of results who can change a man's life. Please listen. If you're a pastor here, after this meeting, please go back to the secret place and say, Lord, I need genuine fire, genuine anointing, genuine results. I'm tired of, I made up my mind that nobody will listen to my teaching and just know that say wow impressive what a great man of God no something should happen to you are we together now pastor you are aware of the river that broke out in Enugu three years ago water that just broke out that supposedly carried healing power did you see how that thing brought the church to its knees? No ushers, no man of God, no preacher. People did not even have time to find out whether it was demonic or not. Pastors trivialize the desperation of people. Let me tell you, people will follow results anywhere they see it. And not your preaching will stop them. There are so many men of God standing on stage saying, don't do this, don't do that. If you cannot deliver, get ready for frustration. Because men, I told people, if I'm not born again, I will chase anywhere I will get results. I won't do it in a secret. I'm not one of those people who do a lie. I will come out and tell you I went to a herbalist. And if you can demonstrate otherwise, then I will repent. Elijah, I love him. He said, go to the mountain. Let's settle this. If Baal be God, let it be known today. If Baal be God, let it be known. And they prayed from morning till night. Did you notice the progression? They first began to pray. Then they sang. When God, their God, Baal refused to come. They started cutting themselves. They knew what sacrifice does to invoking presence. They started physical injury. And Elijah said he may be sleeping. And when it was his time, he called on the God of heaven. And he imagine if God did not show up. Because that's what is happening in many churches. Don't just say, hey, it's what is happening. Many of us men of God make bold claims. God will come down. I don't know what we mean by calm down. Maybe somebody fall under the anointing and then you have two people just roll around a chair and then we, we smile because it's a validation to our statement. Shame! Ignorance. When God comes down, even if... We're going to pray. Our prayer tonight will be a cry before God. And say lord i lay my ambitions this hidden desire for fame that is destroying grace from my life this hidden desire for for a name that is driving me to fast this hidden desire for recognition to outsmart other men of god and demonstrate superiority it must die lift your voice and pray The fire never comes until there is a sacrifice. Shibarata kapari kas kapran deka deba la deba os. Skata praska leba kosha to praka deba la deba kapraska deba la deba. Manda praska basha kate kate praka deba la deba kosha prakiya. That I may decrease. 
that I may decrease that I may decrease that I may decrease that I may decrease hallelujah I like you to pray and say father everything in me that has not been handed to you I hand it over tonight my ambitions my plan that quest for fame everything everything let the Isaac be laid down tonight